so students now we are going to study molecular spectroscopy as in the previous videos we have studied about the atomic spectroscopy where the atoms plays an important role now we are going to study the molecular spectroscopy which involves the interaction of electromagnetic radiation with materials in order to produce an absorption spectra which is called as a spectra from which structural or compositional information can be deduced in this case the energy changes takes place at molecular levels this is the important thing that you have to remember that like in this the characters like molecular absorption emission and vibration are studied so the molecular expressions can be studied by molecular spectroscopy with the help of the instruments like colorimeter ultraviolet and visible spectroscopy infrared spectroscopy Fourier transfer infrared spectroscopy and fluorescent spectroscopy now let's see each one of this the first one is called as a colorimeter now what is a colorimeter colorimeter is a scientific technique that is used to determine the concentration of the colored compounds in solution by the application of beer lambert's law which states that the concentration of a solute is proportional to the absorbance so the special feature of the colorimeter is that it is used only for to determine the concentration of colored compounds in solutions and it obeys the beer lambert's law which tells you that the absorbance is directly proportional to the concentration of the solute if the concentration is more the absorbance is more the second one is called as ultraviolet or visible spectroscopy now ultraviolet and visible spectroscopy in this the molecules containing bonding and non bonding electrons can absorb energy in the form of ultraviolet or visible light to excite these electrons to higher antibonding molecular orbitals this technique analyzes the compounds using the electromagnetic radiation spectrum from 10 nanometers to 750 nanometers the most important feature is that it the atom must be in the gaseous state this absorption or emission gives an apparent color to the sample being analyzed this absorption of uv and visible radiation is the main purpose where the excitation of electrons from ground state to the higher energy excited state takes place and this is possible when the light with right amount of energy that is wavelength is being absorbed This spectroscopy can be used to measure the concentration of samples using the principles of Beer Lambert's law. So this is also similar like colorimeter where it obeys the Beer Lambert's law. This type of spectroscopy is also used to identify the presence of free electrons and double bond within a molecule. It is a valuable technique for the identification of organic compounds. it also gives information about the presence or absence of multiple bonded system conjugated systems aromatic systems and heteroaromatic systems it is used in the determination of certain functional groups in organic compounds it is also used to find the concentration of protein and dna in a solution so this is a very important spectroscopy method where different kinds of functional groups can be identified in this spectroscopy we have two forms one is called as a single beam spectrophotometer and the other one is called as a double beam spectrophotometer in the single beam spectrophoto as you can see in this diagram in this slide we have the light source then selected wavelength is passed through that is monochromatic will filter will act as a filter and the desired the wavelength will pass through the light will pass through the sample then how much amount of concentration is present that much the absorbance will take place as as per the pure lambert's law and then the light is detector it passes through the computer but gives the signal so this is how the ultraviolet and visible spectroscopy works 
the next is called as the infrared spectroscopy now infrared spectroscopy it can be split into ir mid ir and far ir so there are three types of infrared spectroscopy which is called as near ir middle ir and far ir near ir has the greatest energy and can penetrate a sample much deeper than mid or far ir but is also the least sensitive ir spectroscopy is less sensitive than uv and visible spectroscopy as the energies involved in the vibration of atoms are very small ir spectroscopy works on the principle that the molecules vibrate with the bond stretching and bending when they absorb infra radiation infrared radiations so particularly when the ir radiations are absorbed the molecules vibrate with the bond stretching and bending this is the basic principle of ir spectroscopy during vibration the molecules undergo change in the dipole moment so when the vibration take place what we can say that the dipole moment changes and when the frequency of ir matches with the vibration frequency of the bonds absorption take place and the spectrum can be recorded this vibration spectra can be used to determine the functional groups present in organic compound the ir spectroscopy is used to show what types of bonds are present in a sample by measuring different types of interatomic bond vibrations at different frequencies it relies on the fact that molecules absorb specific frequency which depend on their chemical structure so this is how the infrared spectroscopy is used the next one is called as fourier transfer infrared spectroscopy or in short it is called as ftir the ftir was first developed by astronomers to study the infrared spectra of stars in fourier transfer infrared instruments the infrared spectra are rapidly and accurately recorded ftir spectroscopy makes use of all the frequencies from an ir source simultaneously as all the wavelengths of ir spectrum are measured simultaneously the method is faster than conventional ir spectroscopy so ir so ftir is more useful than ir spectroscopy even the traces of the sample can be analyzed by this method it provides complete spectral range without using movable parts like slits grating chopper etc which are using conventional ir spectroscopy the next one is called as fluorescent spectroscopy in fluorescent spectroscopy if a beam of light is incident on some substances they emit radiation such a phenomenon is known as fluorescent and this phenom phenomenon is instantaneous it means that it starts after the absorption of light and stops when the incident light is cut off the substances showing fluorescence are called as fluorescent substances as only a few substances exhibit fluorescence it is a valuable tool for analytical chemistry fluorometer fluorimetry is 100 times more accurate than the absorbance methods using this method it is possible to determine two components emitting same fluorescent color simultaneously providing their respective wavelengths are sufficiently far the only limitation in fluorometer is that fluorometry intensity depends on ph therefore a careful buffer solution is required to be used